Welcome to Impact. A humanitarian crisis is developing in Iraq. Up to half a million people have been forced to flee the city of Mosul after Islamist militants overran it and took control. Well, the Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki is calling it a conspiracy, but just who are these militants and what do they want? Well, the group responsible is ISIS. The name stands for the Jihadist Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, or al-Sham. The group is relatively young, having been formed in April 2013 as an offshoot of an Al-Qaeda group. But in just over a year, it's already responsible for schools of deadly attacks across Iraq and Syria. And the motivations behind those attacks? Fighting for an Islamic state that would straddle the borders of both countries and across the eastern Mediterranean. We'll get more on this in a moment. But first, Paul Adams brings us up to date on the fall of Mosul. The exodus from Mosul goes on. These dramatic pictures from the Tigris River show civilians fleeing, fighting on the other side. Perhaps as many as half a million people have now left Iraq's second largest city. Roads are clogged as families seek shelter in nearby Kurdish areas. In Mosul itself, the smouldering aftermath of a battle that didn't take long. The militants attacked just five days ago. On Monday, the provincial governor urged residents to hold firm. Hours later, he was gone. Iraq's outgunned security forces weren't far behind. Militants now control government offices and banks too. Today we are dealing with the situation. We are not going to allow this to carry on, irrespective of the price. In January, another major city, Fallujah, fell to the same hardline group, the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant. The government has tried and failed to take it back. Tens of thousands of people have fled. ISIS now controls a broad swathe of territory across the Middle East. In Iraq's Anbar province, Fallujah is still in rebel hands and there's been fighting in Ramadi too. In Syria, the group is involved in fighting in Aleppo and has a regional base in Raqqa. And now, in a dramatic extension of their influence, they have Mosul too. This group of people now, there's tens of thousands of these guys and they now have a territory. They control territory, they control border crossing points, they control oil resources, mineral resources, trade, income. Uh, they have a base in the middle of the Middle East. In Syria, ISIS has waged a savage campaign against Shia Muslims and Christians, part of its wider effort to create an Islamic state. It's made extensive use of foreign fighters, including some of the hundreds of young British Muslims who've gone out to fight. Back in Iraq, the government is struggling to respond. Overnight, there were clashes in Baiji, whose major oil refinery supplies much of the country. These unverified pictures appear to show fighting before the militants reportedly withdrew. With hundreds of thousands of Iraqis once more on the move, it's clear the country is now in the grip of a crisis as bad as anything since American forces left three years ago. Paul Adams, BBC News. Well, let's get more on this. Joining me now from BBC Arabic is Mohammed Yeya. Uh, Mohammed, a desperate situation unfolding on the ground there. Uh, Nouri al-Maliki gave a press conference within the last hour calling it a conspiracy. I mean, just tell us a little bit more about that and the thinking there. Yes, this is something that he said yesterday and he repeated today and he mentioned the word, word conspiracy several times. Uh, the stunning uh, way that, that uh, Mosul and the whole province of Nineveh fell yesterday uh, is, is making everybody raise question marks uh, because yesterday Maliki said that there were enough forces there to repel thousands of, of uh, attackers. And he has in the past alluded to this uh, regional conspiracy uh, of external countries. He hasn't named any countries, but, uh, you know, Maliki is seen as an ally of, of Iran, and in the past there were tensions between Iraq and, and uh, Saudi Arabia and other Gulf nations. Uh, so, uh, I mean, this is, what he, this is what he was referring to. But for the moment, he has a lot to deal with in terms of the desperate situation on the ground. Uh, and, and just if you can, Mohammed, just shed some light on us on uh, the situation at the Turkey building in Mosul. I understand that there's been an embassy building there that's uh, been under attack as well. We heard in the past hour that uh, the uh, Turkish consulate in Mosul uh, has been taken over by uh, the ISIS fighters and the head of the mission is, uh, has been taken hostage along with a number of uh, consulate staff.
this is going to be obviously going to be affecting a number of countries uh, looking in on this. I mean, how do you think the West are going to react to this if they can at all in this situation? Uh, we heard that the Iraqi government has appealed to uh, various uh, foreign countries for help. Uh, yesterday we heard that the uh, American embassy in Baghdad was contacted and asked for American military uh, assistance and uh, they are waiting for a response. And the, also Maliki has appealed to the EU and other uh, regional uh, allies to help him. Uh, uh, and we know that America had said that this uh, attack it will infect the entire region. I just want to ask you before we let you go, Mohammed, about the people, the some 500,000 people that are trying to flee the city at the moment. I mean, uh, what of them do we know of their fate and where they're going to be heading to? Okay, Nineveh is a, is a big province. It has three and a half million people. We know that about half a million have fled and uh, a lot of them have fled to northern uh, the Kurdish areas. Uh, but, you know, there are still three million people there under the control of the ISIS fighters. Yeah, an incredible situation unfolding there. Mohammed, thank you very much for talking us through that. Mohammed Yeya there from BBC Arabic. Thank you. So how did ISIS take Iraq's second biggest city? That's one of the main articles on our special section of the BBC News website. Do take a look. Just log on to bbc.com forward slash Iraq for the latest video feature and, of course, analysis from all our correspondents in the region.